Hello. Hello guys. from New York. Dr. Sharma. Can Dr. you hear Sharma, us? Nice to see you, Dr. Kenny, Dr. Dangus. Uh, oh, Dr. Kenny. From Gulf Interview Society. So please um, go ahead, then we'll introduce, um, you know, the rest of the panels later on. Beautiful. So we want to thank uh, the Gulf Intervention Society to give us the opportunity to showcase a beautiful case. And we have been following the discussion for last uh, one plus hours about the left main bifurcation, two stand, single stand. And so this actually will really fit in <coughs> to the theme of the conference because this patient has a distal left main trifurcation kind of and with a poor ejection fraction. And both uh, Dr. Keeney and Dr. Dangus and you see our rest of the cath lab staff, fellows and um, <coughs> nurses and technicians. We are all ready to show this live case in next uh, timing wise. We are not clear whether it will be half hour, 45 minutes or one hour. We'll be but good. we'll show the case. We'll be good. And Dr. <laughs> Keeney will present the dream team that we have uh, yeah. uh, at Tomley yeah. over here. So myself, uh, Dr. Kinney here, I have Will, who is uh, the chief nurse here, then Ashley, who is uh, the second nurse helping us, Pablo, the chief technician, as if his other technician, and then we have two fellows, who is uh, Rajiv and Ali, our two interventional fellows, and then I have Kiski, who is our uh, imaging faculty. Uh, so with the dream yeah, team, excellent. we're starting. Dream team. Dream team. Excellent. Let's go to the slides uh, so we can show you the clinical aspects of the case. And... Um, um, you guys the, uh, can hear us very well, right? You can see us and hear well? Yes, we can see yeah, you. Yeah, great. You. Great. So this is a complex 81-year-old uh, female with an established CAD with several prior PCIs, established uh, heart failure reduced ejection fraction with a lot of comorbidities of uh, that you see listed inclusive of diabetes as well as advanced chronic kidney disease, COPD, asthma, um, and uh, mor morbid obesity as well as some uh, pulmonary embolisms in the past. He presented with a heart failure and a likely a type 2 MI in relation or perhaps a small type 1 MI, a very high BNP in the 4000s, managed aggressively, ultimately had a, um, had a, uh, a coronary angiogram. And, uh, uh, you know, first of all, let me also remind everybody that the EF is 32% for a long time due to prior MIs. And she had a few PCIs about two, three years ago. From that point on, though, she was rather stable and always had moderate, to, uh, moderate level MR as well as mild ejection fraction. So you can see the combination of medical therapy, very advanced with all the classes of medications indicated for CAD and um, and uh, CHF uh, level one, and in the uh, angiogram, she had a new development of a uh, osteal LAD, uh, osteal ramus, and proximal circumflex disease. So, in association and left main trifurcation involvement, as well as some kind of branch disease of the right core artery, only a minor branch, I must say. Uh, total uh, syntax score 42. Two, and due to severe now mother regurgitation, ejection fraction 23%, was referred appropriately discussed for a, cabbage, a triple vessel cabbage, a mother valve repair or replacement procedure, ultimately a few days after conferring with a heart team inclusive of the CHF team, the clinical cardiologist and the heart surgeons, the patient was declined for this extensive intervention, was then transferred to the intensive care unit with a swan gun scatter to be medically optimized. And uh, creatinine went from uh, three down to two right now, a wedge pressure and around the 15 range overnight. And uh, in general, let's review a few slides about the status of uh, why we did all these steps. This is the uh, uh, AUC 2017, and you see where it uh, goes, high syntax score and STS score 5.8 of unprotected left main or complex CAD after heart team discussion. And you can see where this patient fits in the AUC exactly at the bottom, left main disease with bifurcation and involvement. Um, on uh, at least two antianginal drugs all the way to the very end, um, a cabbage preferred and after heart team discussion PCI, exactly the step that was followed here. Next item, please. And you can see now with the PCI, we uh, opted to support the PCI with a 
intravascular, intraarterial microaxial pump named the uh, impeller. And uh, uh, we have a LV ejection fraction, as we say here, 20 to 35. You see exactly where the patient fits under complex multivessel PCI with high syntax score over 32 and STS score over 5. A patient meets both of those. And the revascularization strategy, you can see the patient uh, in general. This is a general slide, favor PCI, favor cabbage. And this patient uh, particularly favors for the PCI, uh, despite the low jet fraction, the diabetes, etc., because of the heart team discussion. And these are the recommendations, and as you see, uh, where the patient uh, fits in this uh, That's why we uh, we opted for the heart team discussion for PCI only after the heart team discussion. We can so show we're the very clear. Now? Let's yes. go to Dr. Kenny. Let's go show the angiogram, please. Let's so right here, um, you know, like uh, Dr. Dangus presented, this is a complex uh, patient, complex patient, complex anatomy with low EF. And how are we going to support? So it has to be a femoral axis. So if you can see here, heavily calcified femoral artery, even before you inject, you can see that. So it is an ultrasound guided pre-close that we did. And this is where we are. This is uh, EDP was high, still in the 30 range. Uh, EF 20%. Yeah. This is the right coronary artery where you can see disease mostly in the distal branch. And this is where we are. Left main, distal left main still okay, but more important is osteal LAD. When we are talking calcium, even before you give dye, you see tram track calcium in the LAD and same with the proximal circ. And this is new disease, very important, particularly the LAD is new disease, tremendously advanced. So this is where we are with the, you know, left main disease where you have distal left main about 50% uh, or so, but osteal LAD, osteal circumflex and that uh, ramus, everything has disease where we are coming to almost uh, trifurcation. The important question also same, we know the circumflex has a lot of disease distally, but after that, the vessel uh, itself does not have any significant uh, large branches. They are small branches, uh, small LPL, small OM. So the large territory is just the so-called ramus. Uh, so we decided that probably we can uh, work on uh, circ to ramus and then... Uh, left main to LAD and uh, this is where we are so we can open the discussion to so what we did so far when we were waiting for you we did rotational atherectomy already of that uh, left main to ramus 1.5 bar 1.5 bar and then the same wire we used and we were able to with the same wire we were able to get into the LAD. This is where we are. We just have a fluoro save of the wire going into the LAD. Yeah. But right now we have the wire in the LAD with one fiber with us. Yeah. And ready to go. That's, let me just come back because Dr. Kim presented very interesting pre things uh, very fast a bit. Uh, the, the most important aspect in a bifurcation, a trifurcation on left main is which branch you're not going to worry that much about. Uh, Dr. Kinney presented very clearly that out of this case, we, we are selected the uh, main circumflex. Although it's a big diameter up top, there is a lot of disease, maybe three or four lesions, and then the vessel tapers down to small areas to small vessels so the outflow not that good so we decided to not worry too much about the distal the circumflex and we're only going to revascularize the proximal circ and the ramus uh, that you see there as well as obviously with the LAD and uh, clearly due to the tram track of calcium the rotational atherectomy highly uh, uh, required in, in all honesty we can uh, we can also uh, you know have many options now or orbital atherectomy could have been uh, uh, placed uh, with this uh, case as well. There's no question about that. But due to the popularity, due to the more abundantly, uh, I would say, uh, usability of the rotational atherectomy in the golf area, uh, we thought to use this uh, uh, this case with um, uh, with rotational atherectomy, 1.5 bur. Um, and it's going to use IVUS, uh, IVAS guidance after the procedure, after the uh, after the rotation of the rectum, because obviously with such uh, highly uh, highly stenosed uh, lesions, the IVAS catheter is not going to go through. 
Um, the only consideration, and we come into that, is that due to the high creatinine aspects, the others would be preferable to the OCT because OCT requires the uh, contrast injections at least at this time. In the newer technologies, maybe they have OCT without the contrast injections. So let's go to the panel to see how you feel. While uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, working into the initial steps of rotational therapy with the LED as the discussion is evolving. Excellent. Thank you very much, Dr. Dangus, Dr. Kenny, and Dr. Sharma. I have with me here experts from uh, Egypt, Professor Mohammed Subhi, and also Dr. Hani from UK and Dr. Albert from UAE. Um, so we have a complex case here, and 80s and, um, you know, compensated heart failure, nanosteel yeah. elevation MI, and we've seen the, the lesions. Um, uh, so uh, tell me, what do you want to uh, do? Hello, George. Uh, this is Hamad Sophi. I think it's a very difficult case. Yes, I agree about uh, the mechanical support to the impella. The second, this is the, uh, a triple disease, double bifurcations. I mean, left main circumflex, then circumflex, Maybe ramus or circumflex hide yep. IOM. So it's a, it's a double bifurcation with instantly through the right coronary. So the question number or are you going to do the right coronary first and then you go for the left main? This is according if for me, if you go for the lesion preparation, I prefer to do the first bifurcation but doing a, a CX or I mean DK crush between uh, oh. the high OM or ramus and the circumflex. And then dealing with the with LED at the, at the end, not to do the LED and then because it's very difficult to do the, the LED first. Dr. Hani, just before you give your sure. comment, you know, I've seen they went with the rotablation. I'm not seeing the imaging. Did you see the imaging? I don't know. Maybe yeah, I your can comment. See over. I can see you there. Yeah. No, 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 I don't touch the. We did not do the IVA set. We wanted to do rota and followed by uh, IVA afterwards. Uh -oh. Perfect. So, from my point of view, the, the few important points here is the appropriateness of the procedure. This is perfectly appropriate to consider PCI in the patient for a lot of reasons, comorbid condition, and obviously he's an octogenarian, 81-year-old. Uh, Let's see where this guy is, must be in the, in the curve or something. So, appropriateness yeah. is perfectly covered here. Advanced Similar approach, with, uh, yes, uh, with, uh, this patient is at a high risk of bleeding for all the information that we've provided, but ultrasound-guided femoral access is of paramount importance here to minimize the complication. Then we come to the lesion preparation. Well, I appreciate that that's what's been used, but there are other many other alternatives you can use. I'm not sure how many 1.5 bar will do in our 3.5 vessel, but that is fine. That is just a lesion modification. IVL, intravascular uh, lysotripsy, is perfectly appropriate here. I've heard quite a bit of negative comments about kilot, but I would personally put a kilot here, and I will go for double stenting from the word go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I entirely agree with the previous comments. I think it's, it's a great case. Uh, certainly, deep bulking is key in this case in order to achieve good results. And I entirely agree that probably from the word go strategy as a bifurcation stenting in this uh, distal left main is key issue. Whether to start with the CERC or the LED, I don't think it's going to make a great difference. Um, in my own experience, I think we started to use orbital atheroctomy and it seems to be slicker through the distal vessel. However, I don't think there is any comparison data between the two. Um, indeed, the hemodynamic support, intravascular imaging is key in this case in order to improve outcome. Okay, uh, anyone from the pan uh, from the audience want to have co questions? Please go ahead, but you know, just wait a little bit. So, Doctor Kinney, what's yeah. your plan? So, right now, I have, like we mentioned, we did the rotational atherectomy of the ramus. We are uh, we have the one fiber. I uh, completely agree with the comment. One fiber may be small. We could have used one seven five or even a two over. But then, since we have adjunct. Uh, other uh, device that is uh, available we decided we use one bar we use the bar to the uh, ramus and the same bar we are going to the led it is a significant lesion almost 95 percent so maybe a good way to start so just going to show you how we do the initial steps so we have the oh, rotor camera here, that. Please. if you can see here you need to remove the tension camera so, here please yeah you can show it uh, full screen yeah you can see here the knob that goes backward forward any tension between the teflon sheet that is inside here and the bar is removed 
the second one I'm going to do is at the Y connector, I'll move the bar. So you can go back and forward. Place. You can see on the floor a oh, little bit. That is the any tension between the bar and the wire. Split Once, the screen, please. Show the floor also. And when these two are done, the next we are on the dyna. So when you have a dyna button, it is the green, which means when I press, the RPM will be only about 60,000 or so. You see that the bar never moved. So this is three important steps that we teach over and over. The As we are going up, and then we are going to start the rotor bar. Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead now with the rotor. You go ahead with your question. You can ask a question. Go ahead, Dr. Hani. Yeah, doc, Dr. Sharma is uh, probably the world leader on ten, uh, SKS, you know, the two stents, double barrel technique. And it is especially in those patients, fragile, 80, 80 something years old. You want to pass a little bit further? I just want to know if you still do yeah. The stents, the SKS, and if you're still putting the two stents without having to recross, without having so many steps, without having to use a lot of contrast, or has he abandoned it now that he can work comfortably with an impeller? But SKS what? for what? For yeah. LED and CRMRs? So you are going to leave the RMRs? Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I would like to ask. Dr. Yeah, Tom, let me ask you, let me answer the very important it, it, question, very important question. Um, is that the particular, the SKS, originally uh, introduced, included the double barrel in the left main in an extensive way. And uh, we know the double barrel has some difficulties in, in, um, in crossing uh, later, etc. Uh, so maybe not as uh, um, uh, utilized uh, uh, in that respect with a very long uh, overlap of double barrel. However, uh, there is also another consideration that you say the simultaneous implantation of a stand can have also a minimal double barrel or maybe a single strut double barrel, what we used to call in the European Barification Club the true V, or as Professor Louvard would say in, in French, uh, le très um, uh, in the, And the left main is so big in this case that indeed there is a 5-0 left main at least, if more than 5-5. Five, five, and we have a 3.5, 3.25, maybe 2.35 LED, and a, and a 2.75 to 3.0 Ramus, we have already uh, discussed that we're going to not work in the distal circ, and, uh, and therefore that, uh, this might be a consideration instead of the uh, culotte or the double kiss crash and all that, we may uh, see how it evolves, of course, because if you end up with a dissection uh, that extends in the left main, that uh, then, uh, you know, the double... Uh, the double uh, uh, this, uh, the covering the left main more extensively would be more uh, pertinent. Um, uh, for right now, the next step is to wire both vessels with uh, regular wires, remove the uh, rotor wire. This already happened in LED, as you can see. Uh, and uh, and we're going to wire now the circumflex, the red, the proximal circuit and ramus. And then we're going to do intravascular ultrasound in but down both directions in order to uh, uh, understand what the next step is and particularly in the LED, if the debulking is enough or if we, uh, if we are, are going to uh, utilize the, uh, maybe a 3.0 um, um, uh, IVL. Now, so going I'll back to that much. question, uh, does Can Dr. Sharma use uh, SKS? I think uh, Dr. Dangles already explained. In our yeah. Bifurcade app, we do discuss uh, SKS, but that's only in the situation, if you see, that you have a left main pa patient with significant disease and patient is in cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock where your blood pressure is very low and you want to be done in uh, two, three minutes taking care of the left main. That's the only time we recommend, but otherwise, like Dr. Dangus mentioned, because of the double barrel situation that we are facing, we are not doing the uh, SKS uh, at this time, but uh, several other uh, uh, two strength strategies can be discussed. And we also Let's know the there was a lot of discussion that happened yeah. regarding uh, which I'd kind of uh, I'd double like to strength we used. With the panelist, uh, Dr. Kinney, uh, about the um, you know rotablating uh, LCS yes. and LED and the chance of losing one of these uh, arteries while we're doing one. Yes. Uh, and how should should we manage that? I mean. Maybe you want to. I think. I think, from my point of view, I think this is a very important point. You're having one wire because you cannot do double wire and rotate, do rotational hysterectomy, and that's what the coin I'm trying to imply from the word go is that if you're gonna use a 
a double wire and you can cross the lesion, which appears to be the case, I think an alternative IVL, life, life change, strategy, change particularly IVL3. that change used already IVL3. here, I would have used it from the forefront. And I hate to say, but also you, you've got a balloon, uh, just a straight balloon, non-compliant balloon, one-to-one, -one, three millimeter balloon. You, you, you raise it up and inflate it up. So I start the back from the lemus. Camera, go to Ivus, please. Take us through, yeah, it's take coming. Us through the Ivus now, please. Doctor this Kim, is a ramus, right? is a ramus yeah. of the ivus. You start from the distal to proximal. You can see mixed fibrocalcific black between uh, yeah, 11 five. and 2. Uh, we're yeah, going to have the uh, kiski yeah. to go ahead with the uh, description. Two, two, three, 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 and yeah, so tight lesion in the lemus. It's coming, like three year vessel. Yeah. That's so tight. So yeah, come to the in. good part. Yeah, here's a healthy You're part. Okay. Where we are. Still uh, proximal circ. Yeah, osteal circ. Now come to the left main. Here we can see another wire. The huge left main, short left main. I will stop. Huge left main. All right. We're going to flush this ibus catheter. We're going to do the uh, ibus of the LAD next. So, Kiski, looks like a rotation laterectomy has uh, done its job. We see sure, that. Yeah, I right? see the tightest part. Yeah. Maybe we did a 1.5 bar, right? So, yes. yeah. Yeah. So definitely no more the bulking or a modification required in the uh, into the uh, uh, circumflex. Um, I mean, to the proximal circ and uh, NOM1 or Ramus, however you want to call it. Um, it is actually with the angulation here, you can see it's really a proximal circ and OM1 that we are uh, re uh, revascularizing um, uh, clearly. And now we're going with the IVOS into the uh, LAD. Let me remind everybody that we had to re-advance the IVUS catheter all the way inside and flush it outside the body before we reinsert it. If you uh, re-advance the IVUS catheter without flushing in the body, you may introduce air embolism. So that's a safety measure always to remember with the IVUS. We need to... George, um, we don't know what, what, what's your plan now. Now you are, uh, have calcification. My, you have my pla what, our, our plan is... Well, the plan is that we don't know the plan right now. We're gonna. The plan is to do IVUS of the and LAD into yeah, left main. That's the plan. And you can see now the yeah, IVUS I mean, of the I, LAD. Yeah, I can see the old stand. We don't have any information. And the so tight lesion well, just well, before well, the stand. 32. Yeah, they want to two to three quarters yeah, so tight lesion. Anyway, so I saw some lunch. That's what they think. Come to the flux LAD. Here's a good landing zone. Here we uh, skip the distal. Ecstatic. Come to oh, steel blocks, okay. LED. I don't think you need IVL. Yeah, good landing zone. Huh? We don't need IVL. We'll do and so tight three. lesion. Yeah, I see some uh, little clock. They want 35 IVL. They come to the left main. Three or IVL. Three. Show us uh, the tightest area sure. of the LED. What did one fiber do? Flush it again. And the question. Show us the most proximal LED. So now, this is the Austria LED. Austria LED, Austria exactly. LED. So okay. tight. And go back, that's, yeah, you see the... Uh, so the MLD is like 1.8. Uh-huh. So, so but, uh, we still have a 360 degree arc. Yeah. So, so there's, a, there's a tandem lesion just before the old, like, stand. Mid okay. LED also has so tight over, lesion. We can do over the few bar, things, three over, three, huh? three, five. Three, five. We'll do a few uh, things Any up top. Any from... Uh, uh, and, uh, I want to yeah. put the plan because, you know, this is a calcified yeah. vessel, double bifurcation. Three, five, IVL. Three, three five. At the beginning. What's your plan? Your plan first is do the Remus circumflex uh, first, or you go the LED and then you go uh, tap. So I think because you have an angle less than 70 in both. So the ideal in such a situation, you go for a DK crush for the uh, Remus and the circumflex and leave the space for the left main, and then ending by the left main stenting and double kissings. Because if you go the LED, it's very difficult to go back into the Remus and Otherwise, you go I like Hani suggests uh, VAV, which I think I don't think is a good suggestion. But in emergency, in cardiogenic shock, what yeah. you plan? I think I think probably you know you need to use the information you acquired from IVAS. They are heavily calcified lesion. Whatever you have in your shelf, you use. I personally think with that IVAS study with a napkin ring, it's IVL for both limbs. If you're going to stint, I think you're committed to two stints from the word go. And once again, this is what you are comfortable with in your, in your unit. If you are going to do a kilot or any other stint, I would prefer going with a circumflex first. And I would not intend to stint the ramus from the word go. And therefore, I would regard the ramus as a, probably an angioplasty, if I can, 
but I will provisionally stand if I need to only. Yeah, I think uh, the, from my point of view, I think sending the LED into the left main to start with is the main goal at this stage. And then you deal with the uh, circulation from the intermediates. Uh, after. I think once you Does debulk, it yeah, it's easy to that rewire. And if you need whatever you want to use the device that? into the yeah. side branch, I think we'll go even further. As a general rule of thumb, but I mean, it's open for your discretion. So. So we have two wires, one in the LED and one, the other one where? Then. The another one is in the Ramas. Um, so okay, I know so the discussion. Know yeah. Okay. All right. From the get, I mean, when Ready? we started the case, we had mentioned that we, we don't want to go to the distal circ. So here we are with the IVL. You see that? You still, the uh, dog bone is there. We are at four atmosphere. We started our uh, first run of the IVL. We are at... 10, 10 pulses given, go up to 6, yeah. Oh, good, yeah, good. see that? So it expanded, you see that? Great. Good. No. Well, one more here. You want one more? Yeah, okay. one. According, finally, if if the dog bone is gone, they say you don't need to, but that's oh, okay, we can give can one you, more. Can you Four describe what you're doing, Dr. Kenny? Yeah, so we are doing the IVL, the shock wave. So very ah, yeah. important in this particular thing, you want to... I, I was so based on the I was. Can you go back to the I was? Uh, uh, take the hemodynamics out and show the I was back. Yeah. So if you see there, uh, Kiski, give us the yeah. diameter of the vessel right uh, there. Fubak is Kinney. like more than three point mm. seven. Doctor Kenny, Doctor Sharma, can you tell us the reason using IVL here? The reason, the reason I was it that. we showed in the, the IVUS there was a steel and napkin ring uh, in the uh, LAD of diameter one point eight. True. Yeah, two tandem. Yeah. You don't get get uh, enough crack. No, and, uh, this is called combo technique. It's combination between rotapletor and shockwave or IVL. Yeah, combo. No, no, it is, it, uh, yeah. we call it a lithotripsy, yeah. Rotatripsy. Uh, rotatripsy. You do rota and then you do oh, lithotripsy. In, in between, so combination in a little bit in will between. be rotatripsy. So we are coming back a little bit. A little bit in, now in, here in. you see the patient is a little restless as we are doing it since we are do, uh, leaving an inflated balloon for a long time. You can hear uh, her uh, uh, struggle what with a little bit of, of chest pain. Oh, 3.5 is a balloon. 3.5. 3.5 by 15 is a lithotripsy balloon. And you can see here I'm pushing the machine to... Um, let's go in between. No, in no, between no, no, the no. two positions. Very good. One more? No need. No, so right one there. thing, I know there's a lot of discussion with the... When you have double wire, you know, yes, you have to remove the wire once yeah. you do rotational atherectomy in the, yeah. in the side we'll do bank. One right there. Uh, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Give another. Yeah. So For the advantage of the shock balloon that you can use two wires, right. not the. You can have two wires. Yeah, you no, can have two wires, no but the, uh, yeah. yeah. No, the biggest issue is that uh, in uh, uh, this kind of uh, patients with low EF and you are doing proximal lesions, so they can become unstable uh, with hypotension and EKG changes. We are leaving the balloon inside for at least. So you can see minutes. how the IVL works. This is the machine that I'm pushing for 10 seconds once the balloon is at four atmospheres. And then after the 10 seconds, we, um, uh, we, um, uh, we hear a blip. And we go up to six atmospheres for a few seconds. We check that we had a full expansion, which did happen. We've given a total of five uh, shocks here with a great expansion throughout the prox and middle lady. So um, we're going to do an angio right after. Uh, and uh, I'm using... We uh, can uh, do IVUS again of the LED. Yeah, I think we should do the IVUS back. Just to, just to show you what the IVM oh, has Oh, great, done. great progress. I'll ask also the, the the audience any questions, comments, please. Just uh, don't keep it inside. Yeah, to tell us. So now, can voting for the audience? Are you going to extend the the OM and then LED, or you do the CX OM? This is option two, or they go for LED for number one. Who will vote for the circuit? I, for the I hope they vote OM for us. Who for vote to the second? Dika crash of the second few. No, who we'll go for the LED? V, 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 v. Okay, also well, great. So v. Yeah. That's 35, 3 over 32. So, so let's so, do the 275 uh, the in, the, team, in the Ramos next. To the team in New York. I'm coming. Give me the. 
Give me okay, the closure. Okay, in the can I just ask the team in New York? We have questions here, please. Yeah, uh, you, you're now... Okay, ready for IVOS again. While we're discussing, you see the IVOS and our IVOS uh, uh, expert is going to explain I mean, it. This is IVOS post-IVL. Yeah, just before the old stand. Yeah, this is the tightest spot, this old tightest spot. Yeah, much bigger after the IVL. And uh, Luna getting bigger. Oh, okay. You have to go back and show them exactly what IVL sure. did. Okay, uh, no, there the was a lunch. question for us from uh, the uh, panel. Coming to the flux LED. This was also so yeah. tight region. Yeah, I see a lot of clock. Yeah, much bigger lumen. Great. Come to the left main. Yeah, very short left main. Okay. So good. We, we have a comment here from the panelists, Dr. Hani. No dissection of left main. Very good. Yeah, great. Yeah, Dr. Hani, what's your uh, question? We have a comment. Please. Yeah. So at present, you've done the debulking, you've done the IVES. And with the finding you have, tell me here. how that influenced the choice of the stinting and what is your seven plan five. at the moment time. It is not clear yes. to me, at least, Two seven five. what is in your mind at present and what will determine the next this step is three five. Okay, so very important, I think the discussion was, are we going to the distal suck? Uh, from the beginning, we did mention the distal suck, though it looks large, they are very small. Branches are coming out, so we are not taking care of the distal circ. Our goal is prox uh, circ to the ramus, one strand, and then left main to LED, one strand. Now, what are the various stenting techniques we can do? Everything has been discussed in your previous lecture. Yes, we can do DK crush, you can do cool art, you can do mini crush. We favor mini crush uh, here in Mount Sinai, or we can do V, and Dr. Dangas did mention because the left main is very large. We can do a V stenting technique where you can place a stent in the LED, stent in the circuit at the same time with a small carina, which is about one to two millimeter. One That's, strut. Yeah. The, Single strut. Le vrai thé, comme Monsieur okay, le Professeur a, Louvard would say. Fine. We have a comment here from the. Come a little audience. bit further. Please, go ahead. Yes. Uh, right there. Right 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 right. A little bit more. Uh, I, I'd good, like good. to disagree with the plan about the OM being the more important vessel or what you call the ramus. Okay. Actually, this circ is a great vessel, not a small vessel. The runoff is not seen okay. because of the severity of the disease involving good. the proximal, which is subtotal good. and also subsequently a tandem lesion. 20. And if you try to operate oh, at least with balloon before you Come make down. your strategy, you will end up maybe changing your mind. In between? No, the, the question again from the audience. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Let's do I the dilations now. We're high pressure in both directions, and then we ex we see how it goes in the, with another okay. angio. Go <laughs> to the please to the panel. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Do what you would like to do, please. We don't need to dilate the LED because you already did with the... Huh? I do. I have 35. Let's do it. Yeah, they have the panel, the discussions, and the audience, uh, and the audience uh, um, the voting now you've and all that. The debulking. What would have been your strategy here? I think uh, from the have lots of side, discussions and from the evidence that we have, DK crush perhaps is the best out of all this. DK oh, crush yes, has yes. a better outcome in multiple meta-analyses, as we've seen in the in the presentation. Want to do, the, do this? Uh, certainly, there's just one new one in that intervention showing DK crush has. Particularly no, in no. terms of well, lesion no. outcome, our vascularization and stent thrombosis. That's too, really. With this lady, our patient, there is a, perhaps a higher risk of bleeding, and hence the dual antiplated, the pharmacology is essential in long term outcome in those patients. I think DK crush perhaps out between what? this one. Between what? DK crush between Ramus and the LED? Yes. So, what about the circumflex? The, well, I mean, it's, I think there, there is a lesion after that. There's a, there is a lesion circumflex after the uh, ramus. So are you going to leave it? Yeah, no, no. I don't think the goal is to revascularize completely at this stage. I think the patient, as you've seen, is a very sick patient and it needs hemodynamic support. So the sooner you get out of the lab with reasonable outcome. And I no. think perhaps, no. perhaps, as I said, between the ramus and this LAT into left main, okay. middle antiplated, shortish duration, perhaps will be the best for the patient, in my so. view. So you are ballooning now. This is just a balloon. And Sim. we can go back to the discussion. Do we Sim. need to balloon with our experience? I have seen 
we saw imaging and having done rota ivl once you have done good ivl you do not need to post dilate but it you know again depends on the operator if they want to post dilate to make sure there's a good lesion preparation you can uh, yeah, i said to that. i said to post dilate because i saw you had some great discussion in between i wanted to give you more time a little bit for discussion let's do it angio before we decide on the final double stent because we're going here with two stents as we decided in the very beginning let's see how we're doing all right, Sina, let's take a run. All right. We and clearly, we can do V. Huh? Huh? One of the V. They want, want to? they want us to do a the quick dilation of the ramus you of osteal like branch. Do you like to protect the LCX or, or not? not? You don't protect the wire the, the balloon or no? Anyone here? No. No, no. I, I, I'm, I disagree about this. Huh? I, I tell you, I need the circumference. Let's do a wire and do a two-five balloon. There. Wire LCX. Two-five high pressure. It's not going to wire huh? LCX. Anybody wire LCX? Everyone would like to wire LCX. Yeah, George. I think. I think. If a... wire, you focus in the LCX after the ramus, and I can tell you there is a ninety-nine percent, twenty millimeters further down. Of the of the LCX, which is a heavily calcific nodule, and yeah, that is good. always going to remain there because 20 millimeters after that nodule, the LCX large diameter ends. So although it looks impressive diameter-wise, the outflow it's really uh, not good. Um, but uh, if you want us to go and uh, wire the proximal just for pure protection, they put a, maybe a two balloon there or something. So it doesn't completely disappear. Uh, maybe we try to do that. We definitely respect that this is a patient in front of you and your hands in your center and your experience will count much more. It's like you now shooting the penalty and the, all the people in the crowd are telling you right or left. So you're going to have to decide and we will follow yeah, and we'll be delighted to see the final results. Of course, there is diverse views and that is what intervention is all about. The good thing is alive, you know, so we want to see things happening. Yeah. I mean, that was the advice anyway for everyone. Do <laughs> okay. Now, okay. Uh, if you so ask my, uh, if you ask my opinion, I would not go there. Okay, because we are opening a, yeah, into the distal. If you see the amount of calcium, we're in not going zone. into the distal for sure because there is a calcific the nodule at exactly to the right of the Swan catheter. Um, and that nodule, it cannot be handled because there is no outflow for a rota wire. Impossible. Dr. Dangus, we, Dr. Dangus, we heard that. Can you just tell us what next? There you go. One second. You see the calcific nodule exactly in the center of the screen. That, and then after that, there is no outflow. So, yes, there is a situation. I understand everybody's focusing the lesion right after the proximal circ. Essentially, the, the uh, distal circ after OM1 is the anatomic location of this. And then we have the distal circ at level of OM2, which is subtotally occluded and is not a candidate for any revascularization. So, uh, uh, you know, that is, is not really the first one. The first one is tempting, but the second one at the level of OM2 with a very, very tough calcific nodule cannot, will not be targeted. The question is, if you're not targeting that, why target the proximal? That is what we're saying here, and that's what Dr. Kini also explained. Okay, let's see the actions, please. Okay, let's go. So give us the stenting. Uh, you wanted V stent? Yeah. Any crush? Okay. Uh, three, three, oh, th we have a three or oh, thirty-two. We, we have few oh, apps uh, that we have, so we are going three, to show five, you 32. all the stenting technique. Yes. Can we take a comment from uh, one of three or oh, thirty-two? Here? Three, five, yes, thirty-two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We need the comment from the experts. Three or oh, thirty-two. Okay. And, and three, five, thirty-two. No, 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 no. Yes, three, five. This is three, oh, two, seven, five. Huh? Two, seven, five, thirty-two, and three, oh, uh, three, five. And, and 3532. 3532, please. 880, we can put a 35. Which we is? We can remove the hemodynamic. Yeah, 3532. Mini crush, bifurcate uh, stuff. Or as simple as you want. Doctor, this Kini, is what? can we just listen to this comments, please? From yes, go Dr. ahead. Say the comment, please. What I'm saying is this case, you could make it as complex as you want or as simple as you want. I'm looking at the anatomy and the size of the arteries. And I totally agree, probably that circumflex will take a lot of work. 
However, if you put a stent in that OM or intermediate, whatever you want to call it, there is a risk you could lose that when you deploy the stent of the what circumflex. I would look at this and think LAD. Right now, uh, probably stent from the left main into the LAD and just drag lute balloon, drag looting balloon to that OM and just leave it simple. Okay. If you decide to put a stent, a T stent here, because I could see a landing, nice landing zone coming into that circumflex. We don't have to go all the complexity of crushing or DK crush or anything. You could see a light little, like a millimeter of, of uh, normal circumflex. You could do a T stent in there. There is, there is no DCB in US. There is no DCB in the US. Sure. That's a but good point. I think a T stent here looks probably. So if you have a DCP, so suppose we have okay, a DCP. That's what you I would do. This is good, good for you. But they have to get experience of it. Yes. First. No. Uh, Can't just I, have, I, have, I have this P, but just also because of the size discrepancy. There's a but huge DCP size being calcified lesion is not. It's not. It's proper. been prepared and well prepared. It's a prepared. calcified lesion. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a very good outcome. Stella, I have a yeah, question. I would like to have Dr. Colombo who's doing okay. CL IFR during the D DCB and have that discussion here. That would be very, that would have been very interesting. So you show us your apps or you want to discuss DCB? No, we are uh, showing the apps on the side. Uh, of course, you know, the various techniques already has been discussed. The mini crush is being shown. The DK crush will be shown. And if you have any questions with the app, so, keep asking so us your, uh, as you can do it. Yeah. We are doing a V stenting here. What's your two stent strategy then? Which one are you going to use? Uh, Dr. Dangas is favoring V stenting, if you can see here. So V is that you have, we have a two, uh, 27532 in the uh, Ramos, and then we have a 3532 Three? Over here. in the LED, left Come back with the left LED. Come yeah. This is a lady. Come back. Okay, th both are 32, so there's no confusion about the length. Uh, advance a little bit more. I think we'll... So you're using, tell us please, step by step, what are you going to do now? Go oh, advance the, the LED This more. is a V stenting technique. So 32 millimeter, two stents. Go. One stent is in the Ramos. Advance. You see that? Advance LED. This is the LED advance there. LED, LED to you. Uh, can you see me moving the LED? And this is the Ramos. So you're going to do V stenting then? A little bit more. More. Huh? We're too much. Okay. There you are. Okay. Let me take a so, cine for them. Can you clarify? This is the stenting you are trying to do now, or oh, what's too the, much the going? The stenting strategy. The, the stenting strategy is V stent. We're gonna push both of them a little bit more inside to minimize the V. Even I, accepting I, a bit higher risk than other strategies, stenting strategy, particularly in terms of stent thrombosis, okay. given this patient. Okay. Let's patient. see the final result about that. Please go ahead with your strategy. Advance a little bit, dear lady. Yeah, my question is to the operator. And the Advance, dear lady. Would, would this FFR is a lady. Would FFR here be helpful in which, which vessel you need to target? Stop. Because I can't hear so many debates. So FFR, if you're doing FFR to say Come back a right little now. bit with this. Are we covering the, the rem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little bit back with the rem. Okay, okay, it's too, too much. I, I, I can answer that. I think too much, too much. Advanced rem will be more. Perfectly appropriate to consider if if are when you have an advanced rem. With ambiguity. Advanced rem. Advanced rem. Okay. One, good. Oh, perfect. Good. Maybe okay. From the angle I'm in. Scenario. But if you are in doubt, good. yes. Of okay. Go up. Okay. I see it. Go. I'm a lady. Ready? Go. Go eight. Eight so the V stenting, you, you ten. you're seeing V stenting ten. here. Uh, ten. 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 You have Fifteen. Uh, one, two, three, down. Yeah, go up yeah, I, I actually expected this to uh, happen because I, I would have done the same. In in very old patients, I one, based two, on three, the down. pharma data of more than two hundred cases, I still use SKS and V stenting. It's a fast in, fast out, it avoids recrossing. And you know, um, you don't have okay, to let's go to the hemodynamics for a moment, please. The patient is uh, very stable. Uh, the blood pressure is 110 over uh, 70 throughout this no, procedure. No, but went down. <laughs> it went a little down to 80 over 60. The Pella support is very helpful in this part of the thing. Um, we want to show them hemos, yeah. Why we needed hemodynamics okay, I'm ready and to, why we okay. selected, like okay. the discussion Let's is why we selected us. this technique so we don't want to recross so, and all that. So, when you go up, Dr. go Kenny, once more, they Dr. can Kenny, see. Dr. Kenny, Dr. Dangas, it's been a long time that we've not used this thing. Can you just take us through it again? 
Okay. I will. I will. I will 20, show it 20, later. 20. I'm you down. Can 20. See the name. Oh, yeah. Go up. Go up. One. One each. You go crazy. Um, is Andrew there? Can he just quickly 20. give the okay. Let's 3D of down the uh, V-stand eight. Eight. or no? Eight. eight both. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Let's. You one, see that? One, two, how the three. Blood down together. Dropping as we go up. Okay, so here are the steps. We position them exactly to have one strut overlap, no more. This is not the classic SKS. This is a V-stand, so, a true V-stand technique. Over here, you see there was an SKS with three millimeter overlap, and we did not like that. We repositioned them further in, and then we have only a strut overlap. Next, uh, and then we go simultaneously atmospheres. You see there is a one strut overlap, no more. So yeah. you go at the same time, you will inflate 8 to 10 atmospheres where you know that's a strand deployment. Right, then you will individually go dilate uh, these uh, strands and that's it. We don't have to recross. What were the strand sizes and lengths? 3, 5, 32 in the LED and uh, 2, 7, 5, 32 in the Ramus. Yeah. So now let us uh, take a picture. Let us see yeah. the distal circumflex. Okay, everybody ready? Want to remove them out? We're not going to get a good picture no, no. with both okay. uh, shafts. Ready, take. No, take a picture. It take a picture. Is looking, I'm taking the wire out. Oh, we are to Ivers. Go. Okay. All right. That it's was a incredible result. A true V-stent LED circ with uh, Ramus with preserved complete flow into the distal circ after OM1. Open. So we standed the... Let's take everything out. No, no, we're to Ivers. Ivers. Oh, Ivers. Okay. Get me the IVUS again. IVUS again. Down both directions. Or maybe only the LED. It Let's go only the LED IVUS because uh, the wire is a little bit. Can you direct the wire of the, of the Remus to the distal part? Yes, okay. Absolutely, right. my friend. That's why we have two <laughs> hands. Left hand uh, wiring, we call that. So we got to IVUS again. No, now we're going to IVUS the LED. Uh, and uh, we're going to see the overlap of uh, one to two millimeter no. As I said, that stent technique is true V stenting. We go simultaneously up again. We minimize, you can see the positioning, then we go simultaneously deploy at eight atmospheres. And then we do a sequential 20 atmospheres for first one, then another, again in the other one, high pressure, and then again simultaneously eight to 10 atmospheres in the afterwards. And that's where we are. We got a great result. With tremendous expansion and uh, and uh, we're gonna see now what's happening at the IVUS. Let's show the IVUS please. Shit. IVUS screen please. IVUS on the screen. Yeah, back. It's a mid LED. Incredible. Coming. Incredible. Yeah, yeah very excited. Like, circuit shape. Perfect. Very excited. It's coming. Yeah, so it looks like this is a mid LED uh, tight spot, but yeah, a little bit elliptical shape, but it looks uh, it's great. I can check later. Uh, box now. Looks well excited. Yeah, nice. This is the uh, pl still plugged LED. Come to the all steel. Yeah, well excited. Maybe edge coming soon. Now we have the 3D of the V stenting we can show. Good. Yeah. One like, strut. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Exactly One strut, I promised wanted. you. One strut overlap was that. Dr. Kinney and I promise you jointly, one strut overlap. Where is Professor Louvard? Le Treve. Where is he? <laughs> exactly. Now, we have the 3D of the V-stenting. Uh, since we asked how are we going to do the steps, we can show that. Uh, you want to do a high pressure in the middle of that no, lady? We'll no need. No need. Okay. We need to post dilator. No, the area is like 9.6. In, well, in the middle. So excellent. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay. So we're gonna, while while trying to show the animation there, you see the on the on the, the three, uh, top left, you see yes. the animation. While we're trying to do the IVUS of the uh, uh, circumflex, you can see one by predilation. Uh, then whatever atherotomy etc. is the second part. Is, uh, then we uh, go to the circumflex. We dilate there also. We pre-treat the uh, side branch. Very good. We have uh, eight minutes left in the transmission. That's great. And uh, Uh, there was no plug shift. If there was plug shift, then we consider mini crash or DJ crash. It did not happen here. And then we advance the stance, as you can see here. 
uh, we did not like the three millimeter overlap and we go to less than two millimeter overlap, exactly what we did and less than what it shows really at one uh, millimeter we did. And then we did individual serial balloon inflation at high atmosphere. We actually went to 20 here um, uh, just because of the calcium burden. All right. Meanwhile, we can do the IVUS uh, here. You can see the IVUS run. Okay, I start. Uh, start and then we here. deflate and remove standing balloons as you see them there. And uh, you can see in the animation how the stent struts are from the inside. All right, let's yeah. go now into the IVUS. Now we're going into the standard area, no distal dissection. Go ahead. No dissection. Well expanded. Lima stent. Well expanded. Meanwhile, uh, any other questions from the panel, from the audience? So we, we, we have a nice. we have a, a, I think a comment from uh, Dr. Subhi here and um, uh, Dr. Uh, Subhi. It, it's a great result, but yeah. again to the audience, try to explain to us. What? Number one, either either I was determine which technique or just to tell you uh, how to deal with the lesion preparation. Nice. And number no, two, no, did you you from yeah. one such to the other, uh, the planning plan Perfect. A plan B during the procedures, or you decide one plan go directly. Well, we decided, a very good question. Number one, we decided that due to plaque burden, less than 70 degree angulation, and uh, uh, that we would use two stents. We did not know the technique up front. We're considering, um, and Ivus indicated a great result without plaque shift and without left main dissection. And at that moment, it was uh, the decision made to proceed with a V stent, as we show you, because of a tremendous mismatch, a 5.8 left main in diameter, and a 3.5 LAD and a 2.75 uh, sir, uh, proximal circ going into OM1 uh, lesion. And that was executed very well, as we show you. And uh, the final IBUS is great. We're ready for the final angiogram, quite frankly. And um, by the way, we also have uh, bonus information for you. The patient is on antiplatelet therapy. We check the PRU. Very sensitive. 58. Excellent. Yeah. And Total contrast, about 160 is AK, 1.1. Beautiful. Right. We have another Excellent. comment, Dr. Hani, panelist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Final Thanks, Reeves. It's, it's a great, great demonstration of a different technique that might not be widely used, but produced very good results in you. And what my question is, no. uh, you know, you've had the, the ramus and you had the stint, so you treated one as the main and the other one as the branch. And it's not unusual to leave the branch, which on this occasion, on a little bit of disease like we saw in the left circumflex. But on what basis did you decide to focus on the ramus and leave the cert, which could be oh, oh. regarded as a codominant? Calcified. Okay, let me, let, let, very good question. Let me explain again. First of all, we treated... It's not, it's actually a misnomer to call it a ramus. It's a pro, we treated the proximal cirque into the OM1. We disregarded the distal cirque after OM1 because there are two lesions. One is right after the OM1, 90%. Most importantly, there is a 99% calcific nodule at level of OM2, small branch. And from then on, the large vessel disappears into another long subtotal occlusion very distally that's collateralized from the right as well as the LAD. So therefore, there is no prospect to uh, revascularize this territory. Uh, we wouldn't even have enough support distal rotor wire to revascularize the second lesion. So if we cannot revascularize the second yeah. lesion, why bother with the first? The goal would be, uh, sure. as Dr. Colombo shows, sure. K-I-O, keep it open. And that technique worked out very well. Keep it open technique, that's what we did. Thank you, this is very plausible explanation and I accept yeah. it, thank you. Are so, you going to do the right coronary now or uh, tomorrow, next session? Next tomorrow? Time. Next time. Uh. Dr. Ahmar, El Albert. Yeah, just quick question, George. This is a great case and certainly great angiographic results. Now, if we come back to the same the patient at the end of the day, your patient is high risk for bleeding. It's a house blood score is certainly is very high in this case. What, from your experience in Mount Sinai, what's the V-stenting in terms of those kinds of high risk cases? What's the long term outcome for them? Do you have any data? Um, well, to tell you to tell you the truth, Dr. yeah, Dr. Dangus, Dr. Dangus, please, and we take another comment. Please go ahead. Yeah, another comment. 
nice case, nice presentation. Um, um, I'm asking yeah. about the ISR. If this patient comes with ISR later, either in the LAD or the high OM, especially if involving the distal left main, how would you treat it? And okay. this thing. Good question. Yeah, so uh, let me go to the second question. If uh, you have a V stenting that comes back, I'm just showing you, you have a V stenting technique, patient comes back. At that time, you will decide that depending on which arm is ISR, okay? So usually could be, I'm giving an example, left main to LED as ISR, the circ is okay. You can just intervene on the LED, but when you're doing it, you have to make sure okay your wiring that you are in the lumen how do you know that you are in the lumen is as your wire you can take a 2o balloon so that the wire the balloon will go into the stented uh, vessel so you know the wire is in the lumen plus we have seen here the expansion was very good so there's no way we will may uh, the wire could go to the side when it comes back so you can just do a balloon and be done if both the branches are gone there's a time you can decide Basically. you want to crush once uh, that means you may want to crush the circumflex at that time and then you do a stenting from again. Here we didn't come into the left main was a one millimeter. Now you will go from the left main to LED. You crush this. At that time you decide you want to do a mini crush, a DK crush, cool out and put the second layer of stent. So that's how you handle it. So, uh, Dr. Kinney, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Dangus, great uh, demonstration of a complex case. I think it was, uh, you know, outstanding from every aspect. You know, we maybe differ in terms of strategy of stinting, but I think uh, you use the one which are you are expert at, you know, have a better outcome. So really is very helpful uh, to hear this from you and in the right demonstration and right lab with uh, everything available. Um, so uh, final words for you and thank from, from us from here. Well, the I just want to show you the cardiologyapps.com. We have so yeah. many apps for all the questions you have asked, the various techniques. Uh, the most important you could also do is a complicate. Go to the website. There are over 80 cases of uh, cath lab complications that we have discussed. Can Everybody I? could assess. Yeah. Excellent. And a final Can comment I? for a uh, final comment from me to answer the question that you said regarding the dual antiplatelet therapy. Uh, the risk uh, in the bifurcation standing coming from from the multiple layers of stents during crushing, double kissing, whatever. With a technique we use, we minimize by one strut this. So in my mind, the risk is very low in, the, in this uh, patient. And the plan for this patient is a stage mitra clip for the severe MR. Uh, and that, is the, that will be the next uh, plan in four to six weeks, hopefully next month. Uh, and again, many thanks for your uh, invitation to be part of, uh, you of your great much. conference in Dubai. Thank you very much, Mansanai. Thank you very much. See you next year.